we want to take lesson nine and challenge you with what we have done in this series. It's our heart that you really heard it. You didn't just hear it as an academic teaching or as a, a novel way of teaching and approaching the Word, but that you heard it with your inner ear and that God began to use it to do something in your life and to help you become more like Him, which is His goal for your life. Ministries, functioning in gifts, all of that, all of those are but tools to work the nature of the Son in you so you can become one of those sons whom He has uh, been promised. He's been promised to be able to bring many sons unto glory. We're talking now the challenge of the word becoming the word made flesh and becoming bread for others to eat. The challenge of God to the hungry heart. Now remember there are two reasons for mature wheat. The first one is seed to the sower. Will you allow God to separate you from the rest of the wheat to become seed to the sower? I remember uh, when I lived in Christian community and we did everything corporately and uh, I, one day I was asked, it was seed time and I was asked to go and fan the wheat. Now everything was back to the land so we didn't have electricity. So they had this special unit which shook, you poured the wheat in the top and then you, you uh, turned this uh, wheel that had others uh, attached to it had a fan attached to it, it had uh, shakers attached to it, and different sieves level. And what it did was it blew out that, which was too small to plant, and probably too small to make, uh, to crush for bread. So it threw out the bad seed, it threw out the tares, it threw out the, by the wind of the Holy Spirit, I mean by the wind, there was a separation so that only good seed was saved to be planted. Second of all, will you let him seemingly bury you in a hidden place, the earth of his choosing? Too many of us want to be prominent today. We want to be prominent in ministry. We want to have the first place. And Jesus condemned the scribes and Pharisees. He remonstrated them for wanting the chiefest place in the synagogue. Hmm. Think on that. Now, will you be willing to die to bring forth much fruit? And one of the things we talked about when we went through this is, I don't know what dying is. Holy Spirit came to lead me and guide me into all truth. Therefore, I must assume that unless the Holy Spirit teaches me how... I don't know how to die properly. I am sure that it's probably dying without whining. Okay? And uh, that I definitely am not uh, able to do 100% of the time. Okay? Will you be among those who let the tares grow among the wheat? Now there's a challenge. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then the final challenge is, will you allow the word of the kingdom to grow, in, grow to maturity in you? It is this seed, the sower seed, that lets the kingdom grow, word grow to maturity in him, that God might take him or her and plant them in the world or plant them out there in the field so they go through the process again as a person. You can apply this to the word becoming flesh in you and the word dying in you and bringing forth kingdom within you. But you can also apply this as God begins to raise up mature men and women and plants them in the world and they go through this process. So that they bring forth many other kingdom seeds. And some of those seeds, uh, there's an illustration that I use uh, often when I'm teaching extensively on this, and it's the story of Robertson Crusoe. And the story of Robertson Crusoe, the first three years he had grain that, that came, came uh, ashore. 
And the first three years he planted grain, it was seed for the sower. He didn't keep any for himself. He kept all for seed and replanted it. And the third year, he separated it out so that it was seed for the sower. And he now could begin, there was enough he could begin to make bread for the eater. It's not all to be seed until, uh, if there's enough seed for seed and to make bread or make wheat or make make uh, grain or I mean make flour. But Robinson Crusoe took two years and then the third year there was enough. He knew that he planted enough he could have seed and make flour so he could make bread. Again, I want to remind you, let God do this work in you. The challenge, the second, remember the second reason for mature wheat. Will you allow God to take you through the winnowing process to separate the chaff in your life? The chaff does not go into the making of bread. The chaff was essential during the maturing time of the wheat to protect the wheat as it matured. But when it became mature, the chaff was no longer necessary. The chaff was not necessary to have when you put it into storage. The chaff is not necessary to have when you replant it in the wheel, wheat, wheat field. And the chaff is not necessary to the making of bread. So, will you allow him, second of all, will you allow him to bruise you and yield to the process of losing your individualism? If God speaks that you're seed for the sower, this second process does not apply to you. But if God speaks that you are bread to become bread for the eater, this process is essential or you'll never reach your destiny. Will you submit to the kneading, the rising and kneading process so he can prepare you as bread? And remember, it wasn't just once the bread was kneaded, there were several times. The bread is needed. Getting it ready, both for the final process and for the fire. Will you allow God to put you through the fire that you might be baked as bread to feed the hungry? There's a song we used to sing in Christian community. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do it. Would you be poured out as wine upon the altar? For God, would you be broken as bread to feed the hungry? Would you be so one with me that I might do just as I will to make the life and love and light my word? Fulfilled. After the lo loaf is finished, will you allow him to break you so that your brokenness feeds others? I may go in in the days to come into other areas of a harvest process of the other um, things that are that we have taught on being in the harvest and the different types of harvest. But this is the challenge for this one. If you're seed for the sower, will you let him make you that seed and process you so that pure seed is planted in the earth? If you call this part to be bread for the hungry, will you let him process you so that your brokenness can feed others. Here's our contact information and I just want to uh, remind you of the website on which there are courses that can be taken for um, ecclesiastical degrees through the Strategic Institute for Christian Leadership. Uh, there's also uh, messages, individual messages and course messages on DVD and CD. You will also find there a donate button and 
If the Lord speaks to you, and please ask him, you can send and help us continue to keep this message going and this ministry uh, going out to the people of God. If you have any questions, please send it through the email, my Gmail address there. Uh, that way I will answer the questions and I won't lose anything as I'm going through and answering your questions, whether it be one question or whether it be a one question with multiple answers or whether it be multiple questions with multiple answers. Uh, this is Dr. William J. Hurst of Dr. William J. Hurst Ministries and the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership, teaching all nations the practical Word of God and mentoring students one student at a time. May God bless you and give you understanding of these things is my prayer.